My name is Dave McDonnell. Uh, to remind everyone what we're talking about, we um, started on storage uh, for data and AI. I'm going to talk about storage for hybrid cloud. And um, my subtopic is making hybrid cloud a reality. Um, if you know anything about IBM, you know we're big about hybrid cloud. And we had a major acquisition of Red Hat to help uh, drive that vision forward and making it, make it real. So um, this actually ties very nicely to the global data platform. Uh, I call this the any slide. Anyone gets anything anywhere. And so the access services is all protocols. We can do them all at the same time. We can share. The caching services is about where the data is, right? Where vertically, right? Flash, disk, or tape, or where geographically, right? Different data centers that can back each other up. Um, management services, everything else, um, and uh, resiliency, including cyber, cyber security and cyber resilience. Uh, so some wonderful concepts. So this session is gonna focus specifically if you see the workloads at the top, I'm gonna to get specifically into the cloud native uh, discussion. And remember that for IBM, this is a big deal, right? Making hybrid cloud real, making it resilient, making it secure, um, that's what we're all about. It's the fundamental vision of the entire company. Um, so IBM storage scale is container native, and uh, I'm about to introduce to you storage fusion, um, which will be a unifying piece of glue to help with the Red Hat OpenShift piece. So Red Hat, OpenShift becomes this unifying glue across all of IBM. So, um, hybrid cloud is not easy, right? Uh, modernizing applications is not easy. 90% um, of uh, organizations are actually working on an enterprise transformation, um, but they're having a hard time. 70% of them don't meet their objectives. Uh, the number one objective is, uh, is, of course, the timeline. Um, so they have this huge desire to get there, a uh, huge sense of urgency, but they don't have the skills to, to get there. Uh, and that's a problem we're focused on solving uh, with this offering. And so what are we talking about? We're talking about um, IBM Storage Fusion. Um, this is a software offering. So we have Fusion software. Uh, it's also an HCI offering, hyperconverged infrastructure, so it's hardware and software combined. So if we do well, we help give customers a common experience for cloud native applications that they can run from a consistent um, um, console management plane in the cloud or on premise and the ability to change back and forth at will. Runs anywhere. Where does Fusion actually run? Can it run on? It can run on um, the cloud providers below, uh, AWS, uh, Azure, Google. As um, some of you I'm sure will know, you probably know, um, they have um, standalone or managed service, right? So we'll be, we're in uh, all the clouds today, we'll have the managed service um, or Rosa in uh, Q2 of this year and uh, Arrow, which is the managed service in Azure in uh, H2 of this year. I guess the question is, does it require OpenShift? It is OpenShift. Yes. This is an OpenShift solution. It is OpenShift. Uh, this sits on, uh, so OpenShift, uh, we can sell it. You can get it from Red Hat. This is to help make OpenShift users more productive, to help them get into market more quickly. So in all these cloud implementations, effectively OpenShift slash Fusion running together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And or on-premise. And, and the VMware solution is also OpenShift as well? So um, a lot of the early, early users of um, OpenShift were on VMware. Uh, they had a very nice partner, partnership between uh, Red Hat and uh, VMware. Most customers are moving though towards um, bare metal. So, so in its best case, this is used bare metal. It gives 20% better uh, resource utilization and 50% better TCO. And you've got Z in power there. So it also runs on, on Z as well, I mean. Uh, anyone gets anything anywhere, right? So yeah. we're working with Z, we're working with power. Um, now remember, this is a process, right? So we're in, while we're in AWS and Azure today, we're coming to the managed services uh, later this year, right, in Q2 and Q4. So we keep enhancing the um, you know, integration of all the various pieces. Okay, okay so um, this is, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to read what's on the, the left here because you see a picture of what it actually looks like. 
Um, but I'm going to spend a little time here um, talking about some of the problems that customers have. They have a hard time getting applications into production quickly. Right? Whether it's applications that they buy that are OpenShift enabled, uh, or whether it's applications that they're writing on their own. So this is a way to help them get into production really quickly. Tested designs, validated, verified, tested. Um, and uh, we have the ability to deliver a lot of scalability. Would anyone have any guesses where some of that scalability would come from? So we're taking um, pieces with the HCI design uh, from storage scale. You'll see here uh, we have integrated backup. Um, that comes from Storage Protect, uh, which we've done for you know, decades in, uh, in IBM Storage. And you'll see here um, we have disaster recovery capabilities, which come from Storage Scale. You've heard a lot about the caching capabilities. Uh, so multi-site backups, multi-site multi disaster recovery, uh, and data cataloging, which also comes from Global Data Platform or our Discover product. So this is integrated. It's turnkey. And the, uh, the objective here is to offer something that can give them all those advanced features later, um, but it's really designed to help them get going quickly so they can get the, this uh, mad rush to hybrid cloud done quickly. Um, there was a question before about Ceph and scale. Um, I'm doing the um, HCI version of, um, uh, of Fusion right now. Uh, we're actually using Ceph under the hood of Fusion software. And do they work uh, together and one with one another? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, and, and by the way, one of the reasons was Ceph with, um, Chris touched on it, but uh, a lot of the integration they have, they were ahead and it gave us the ability to run on all those clouds a lot more quickly. So, so we are seeing, um, e even short term, a lot of complementary functionality that's helping us. How does this fit with like Versus Scale or whatever? Is it, Versus Scale is a, IBM HCI solution. Yeah, I believe you're probably talking about VersaStack. Okay. Which was a partnership uh, with Cisco designed to make things easy. Um, uh, so VersaStack, in, in essence, is actually more flexible. This is for customers using, using Red Hat OpenShift. Okay. And of course, uh, I, honestly, I think we've talked about most of uh, what we're going to talk to on the software here. We run on all the clouds. Uh, and we, um, we leverage some of these same capabilities, consistent interface, and um, I'm going to, in the interest of time, uh, move on here. Um, we are quite good at this. Okay, so uh, we've taken over the um, ODF uh, offering from Red Hat, right, that moved to IBM Storage together with Ceph. Uh, so uh, Evaluator Group came out with this last month, this report. Um, we do have a strong um, you know, track record of making this work for customers and, and helping them. So we're, we're pretty good at this. Uh, so far as we can tell, uh, we don't really have any direct competitors doing exactly what we're doing on the, uh, on the HCI side. Right? We are trying to make it easy for customers to get going quickly and make it easy for them to scale. So if you were to add up all the various pieces of servers, storage, switches, um, performance capabilities from a parallel file system, backup, disaster recovery, data catalog. Uh, that's a lot of different pieces for a, a, an application platforms team to go and chase, put together, and, uh, and then to manage from there. And the lifecycle management of that whole stack, that's a lot of moving pieces. So um, one of the, um, uh, going back to the beginning, I was talking about this um, Red Hat OpenShift being a unifying glue for overall IBM, right? For IBM's hybrid cloud vision of making it real. So we're partnering more closely than we have before with some of our software brethren. And um, uh, they have made all of their applications, uh, put them in cloud packs. So we have flexible licensing for on-prem and cloud. And we have a number of wins in a number of different um, uh, industries uh, to, to help customer deployment and adoption of cloud packs go much more quickly and much more smoothly. Um, so we're seeing lots of success. We're also seeing lots of interest in the disaster recovery capability, lots of um, uh, warm welcomes for an integrated source of support. So not only at the platform level, uh, but also at the, uh, the software level. One question for you. Your customer, how would, you, how would you respond to a customer asking you to differentiate this from say IBM Cloud Satellite, which offers a lot of the same software benefits, the cloud packs and stuff like that, delivered from the IBM cloud, there's a control plane that controls that, but essentially is a managed OpenShift 
that has the ability to do some of the PaaS offerings and the cloud packs running on it. I know it doesn't have scale, spectrum scale storage in it. There's no storage delivery with that. But I could see customers kind of being like, what should I do? Um, how, would you, how would you talk to a customer about that? Well, the, okay, so IBM Cloud Satellite does a nice job of extending offering software. Um, this doesn't replace Red Hat um, Container Registry either. Uh, so this offers scalability, backup, disaster recovery. Um, it also offers um, a lot of opportunity for consolidation. So in the, in the world that most of what Matt was talking about, we see high-performance computing. Mm. They put all things together in one. In this world, we see a lot of tiny clusters. Uh, so we have that scalability can offer a lot of uh, benefits to customers just by making it simpler to manage, simpler to grow by collapsing some of those silos and layers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then, um, uh, I mean, that's just even all within one domain. When we get into the multi-protocol discussion, right, a lot of people have that separate system, which is the S3 layer mm -hmm. for maybe a, a cool copy of data or the HDFS data lake. That's a, they're all their own silos. Right? So the beauty of this capability is we can knock down some of those silos and reduce the number of copies. Simpler to manage, simpler to grow. Thanks. Um, I think it's um, pro probably um, just uh, even touching on that a step further, what do we do compared to what Red Hat does? How do we team with them? Uh, so they have, of course, their own basic uh, OCP or OpenShift container platform. Uh, they have value-added offerings that sit on top of that. And this shows how what we have complements uh, what, they, what they do. Um, th there is some tiny bits of overlap, but at the end of the day, uh, they see a lot of value for some of this um, HA and DR capability, data cataloging. And of course, with the HCI system, we give them speed and we give them scalability. Um, so, why would you call IBM? Um, uh, back to, to one of your questions, if you need, uh, if you're doing application modernization, if you're using Red Hat OpenShift, if you need things like speed, simplicity, resi resilience, and scalability, that's what we're about. Cool. So, here's a question for you, just so that I really understand the scope of how you're positioning this. This would be primarily for on-premises data centers, or would it be for a, shall we say, cloud provider to place your hardware and software inside their cloud, you know, public or hybrid cloud data centers? Okay, so um, this is this is actually designed for both. Okay. So, so um, we've done this for many years, right? Where you build the perfect appliance and you're all proud of it and you show up at a customer site and they'll say, I love it. Can you do it with Cisco servers and Juniper networks and NetApp storage? Sure. Uh, so uh, in essence, the answer is yes, here's Fusion software. Uh, and if you want us to take more workload off of your shoulders, we can do it. And someone says, I want it in AWS. Someone else says it in Azure. We give them that flexibility and agility. So this is the... Global data platform concept, any, 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 anyone, anywhere, anything. But wouldn't have Amazon have to buy this product and put it inside their data centers to, or am I missing something? Uh, well, the um, customer would either buy it and bring it or they could buy it uh, from a partner, buy it as a, a service, um, buy it off a marketplace. There's multiple different uh, different ways it's They have to put it in an AWS data center. I'm, I'm a little confused, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm missing it. So, so you can software. run it on OpenShift in on AWS. I see. Thank you. Okay. Did he it, answer that? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> yes. But if if you're confused, it, it's it's a uh, it's actually sometimes counterintuitive. We offer so many degrees of flexibility, it can it can get confusing with software. So that's why we part of the reason we build these bundles to make it easier to I see and faster to uh, to deploy. Okay. 